So my name is Jerry Chan. Uh, I work at SBI Bits. And uh, I, I came from Wall Street, so don't throw tomatoes at me, uh, but technology side. Uh, I've worked uh, in Goldman and JP Morgan for most of my career for about 15 years here in Tokyo, and mostly foreign exchange uh, trading systems technologies and uh, risk uh, management systems, so front office. So I deal with the markets a lot and deal with traders a lot, and I know how, uh, I, I got a little bit of an idea. I ask most of it being from technology. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how um, we can get Bitcoin to be the greatest cash in the world. And so I guess the first thing is, I, I, sorry, I apologize. I'm the chief, chief digital assets solutions uh, of, of our department. And pretty much that effectively means I'm kind of like the chief Bitcoin officer, which is the joke in the, in the office because uh, I'm always the one uh, talking about Bitcoin more than, uh, but we also, you know, blockchain technology as well. Now, let's talk about cash in the world. So what, what is, what is um, well, cash is all about medium of exchange. Right, because cash is not necessarily supposed to be store of value first and foremost. It needs to be a medium of exchange because, because that's what cash is. It's supposed to be like a currency. It's supposed to flow. And, and, and what drives exchange? Trade, right? So let's talk a little bit about first, um, you know, this new world, which we want, uh, we want Bitcoin to be the best cash in. What, what is this new world? So first, we're going to have to talk a little bit about the, a little bit about the old world, where we kind of came, not old, but, you know, the, 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 the near, uh, near past world, which is fintech, to, uh, the, the whole notion of fintech, right? The, first off, the, the invention of cryptocurrencies is kind of basically opened up this new age of discovery, right? This new, whole new industry. And, and now we have this new world to, to, to sort of discover. And it's pretty much driven by the notion of, you know, growth and expansion. It has, we have to grow very, very quickly. It's very much like um, the times when the, uh, the colonials came over to the New World and discovered America, you know, it was like, wow, this whole new place. This, we, don't, we can't even fathom all the things we can do here. There's, there's gold, there's silver, there's uh, mangoes uh, and, and wood and, and all this kind of stuff. So th this is the new world we're going to embark in. Uh, and first off, talking about back to what's FinTech 1.0 is pretty much the onset of e-commerce. So if you remember, most of you, I think, should be old enough to remember, back when banks just ran their own systems. Every company just ran their proprietary systems. And the internet was just some geeky thing that web developed. Well, people didn't even call it the web back then. But uh, you know, they just went online and they shared some ideas. And, and that was just like a geeky tool. But um, FinTech 1.0 is when all those systems were, you know, the, these corporate systems started moving on board to the internet and then opening up companies on the internet. And, and these companies were driven by the technologies, um, these whole infrastructure plays, all these companies that do these kind of things today, these foundational technologies evolved because of FinTech 1.0, right, or e-commerce. And then companies that you all know evolved to become the giants, uh, players of the industry. And now they're probably, you know, they, they're sitting right up there with almost as banks. I mean, with Google, probably bigger than most banks. Um, although Google's not a fintech, it's just tech, but um, you, the, you know, Amazon, et cetera. And then somewhere along the way in, uh, you know, 2009, is that a little too high on the screen? Are you going to read it? Um, you know, this, this white paper drops uh, into the community, and then in comes this thing called Bitcoin and blockchain with it. And then it kind of basically makes everything sort of have to be rethought, right? And, and so this is fintech 2.0. That's our... Um, our chair, chairman, uh, Yoshi Taka Yo, uh, Kitao-san, and his, uh, in a recent uh, um, annual report, uh, he, he basically coined the term FinTech 2.0 as an ecosystem which is, which is driven with innovative technologies based on blockchain, right? So, so this is, uh, we, we're taking a very, very uh, huge sort of a drive towards a blockchain, uh, FinTech 2.0. But enough of the sales pitch. Um, just joking. No, uh, this is, you can see we have a lot of like, we, we actually are quite proud that we've invested in more blockchain companies than even Google. So I'm not going to bore you with that slide. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Um, I like to talk in terms of images. So I talked about FinTech 1.0, where we were, FinTech 2.0, where we want to go, and in this new world where cash is going to be dominant, electronic digital cash. So let's talk, in ter let's talk visually in terms of, um, in terms of a, a game. You guys, any gamers in a room? 
Raise your hands. Thank you. All right. See, this is, thank you very much. This is the first technical conference they let me speak in because, you know, I, I'm not, I, I'm no longer technical. I used to write a lot of code. I don't do that anymore. Um, I feel good that there are some gamers in here, and I, I think this, this, this sort of, uh, um, this presentation will, will speak a lot to you. So let's embark upon this new, brave new world. First we have, thing we have to do is map our way through it, right? We have to identify the territories, the, uh, the, 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 the components of this new industry that we have to go through and, and basically explore and build businesses in. And it's very much like, you know, um, I'm not comparing Satoshi Nakamoto to Columbus, but maybe that's just your, you know, subconscious thing going in there. But um, let's talk in terms of territories and like, like a land grab, right? So what's the first thing that we, we, what's the first component territory that we need to identify in this new world? Mining, right? So mining is, you know, uh, the, the production of the cryptocurrencies, right? And, 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 and with the gamers in here, you, 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 yeah, 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 geek. Yes, this is, comes from Settlers of Catan. Uh, I'm old enough to know that it was called Settlers of Catan, not like just Catan and all these cool millennials call it. Uh, anyhow, that's mining. I don't need to explain to you mining. And if I did, then there are probably better, more qualified people here in this, uh, in this conference to explain to you about mining. Um, next thing, retail commerce. This is the proof, uh, point of sale. This is like the mom and pop shops taking Bitcoin. This is like me going over to two dogs over here in Rapongi and buying like a craft beer with, with Bitcoin. So the retail commerce is a very important part of this new economy, uh, this new cash economy. Next, um, exchanges and brokerages. Notice that they are two different tiles, but they came in at the same time. They came in at the same time because everybody today thinks they're the same thing, but trust me, they're not. Um, coming from financial industry, exchanges are not the same as brokerages. What you think of as Coinbase is like a vertical exchange or what they call is like a one-stop shop exchange. They are the brokerage, they are the exchange, and guess what, they're also your clearinghouse. Um, which means they do your KYC, they take care of your clients, uh, you know, they let who to, to play, who to join their, um, their, uh, their platform or not. They actually do the matchmaking, which is the exchange, and then they actually clear you. Basically, they settle you, you know, they do withdrawals and deposits. Normally, that's not all the same uh, company in the, you know, in financial space. Um, next, remittance is very often talked about back in 2013, 14, uh, and the, it is a very big industry. It's basically the moving of money between countries, um, normally migrant workers from, a, a developing country would uh, send their uh, best and brightest to first world countries to make a lot of money, send it back home, right? That, that's a very large part of the GDP. Uh, Philippines, I think, takes in upwards of $20 billion a year GDP from countries like Japan and the United States and, uh, and uh, other places. So that's a very big business, but the reason why it hasn't developed yet is because you know, it's, very, it, it's very highly regulated for good reasons, right? Next thing, um, settlement and clearing. Settlement and clearing is the third piece of the puzzle, which nobody's actually done on its own yet. But that's because you need a clearinghouse, centralized clearinghouse. And I know everybody just sort of freaks out when they say centralized. But some things are better centralized, namely risk management. It doesn't have to be, doesn't mean there has to be only one. It just means that there has to be clearinghouses. There could be more than one. Maybe only the good ones survive. But uh, that is very important because without clearing, uh, you, don't, um, you won't be able to pool all the risk of all the exchanges and brokerages together so that um, a bankruptcy of one company doesn't take down all the other ones. Uh, next, I, ICOs. Uh, this is Bitcoin space, so I guess a lot of people here are kind of 50-50 uh, on ICOs. But actually, the ICOs are actually capital markets. In, in banker speak or in financial speak, ICOs is a way of raising money. It's an innovative way of raising money. It's a new one, um, but it effectively is all ways of just raising money. It's all just Kickstarter on steroids or, or Indiegogo because you, it's whether you issue a token for usage or whether you issue a token for pseudo equity or some sort of payback dividends thing, it's, it effectively is just give me money so I can write my project before I actually write my project because I'm really cool and I have a white paper. So, so that, that's, that's ICOs, but it is, it is a valid territory of this new world. Um, next. This, if you've tried to run a business in Bitcoin, you've probably realized there's, there's not many people doing insurance. Sorry, the slide is hard to see because it's a red clay brick tile. But in, insurance, um, you know, insurance companies willing to insure your business if you're doing Bitcoin are very far and few in between. 
And that makes running a large business like an exchange very difficult because you're wearing a lot of risk. Also, the fact that there's no settlement clearing houses means you take all the risk. It's even worse for you. So uh, this is a very big business that, that will be explored going in the future. Next, when you have insurance and when you have uh, you know, capital markets, you're definitely going to have derivatives. Sorry, guys. Derivatives did destroy the world once. But it is an inevitable uh, financial sort of component of the world because whenever you have risk, right, ICOs or mining, you're going to need people to hedge the risk because you're going to want to offload that risk to someone who wants to take it. Right? Otherwise, you end up running a business that could go boom and you don't have a business anymore the next day. Right? Now, there's a big open hole in the middle. Does anybody, can anybody guess what that is? Not yes. Banking. No. No. No, banking. Not bank. You be your own bank. Uh, cash? Uh, kind of. Actually, you know, I kind of heckled you, but he was the closest. It's kind of banking, but really, because banking is kind of a bad word, but what banking really is, because banking is a lot of things these days, and the banking that destroyed the finan you know, made the financial crisis of 2006 to 2008 was not the banking, what true banking should be. True banking should be custody, right? Basically, they just hold your money safe for you, right? Because you can't be bothered to do it yourself. How many custody plays are there in Bitcoin space? Not very many. Bitgo is one. But, but if you're an institution and you need to park $100 million, where do you do with it? Do you trust it to your, you know, your treasure? Uh, you could, uh, but I don't recommend that. Uh, you, you, do, do you trust it to a web wallet? Of course not. Do you tr even trust it to a wallet which is open source, which you installed in your machine? Still, probably a really bad idea. I mean, you do need custody. In, in the pure sense of pure banking, like back in the Medici ages when bankers just basically put your gold in the vault, we need that kind of, we need that institution. Because obviously you're not going to be able to run a very large business uh, securely without it. So, wait, I think one thing's missing this picture. This, this is kind of like the, the world of, of crypto and all, its, and all its components, but I think one thing's missing, and there we go. All right. <laughs> We, we, we have bad actors, and right now bad actors generally hang out in the exchange territory for obvious reasons, because everything is off-chain and they can take your money. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about how now, now, now that we have the whole picture, sorry Mark, I, I, know, you're, I know you're clean now, so, um, but uh, you know, you're, you're, he's, he's getting more popular now because of the whole fiasco than he ever was, so I think he enjoys it. Um, let's talk about how we map our way through this territory to global cash, all right? So first things first. First thing that inevitably evolves is exchanges, right? Because, I mean, I technically, you know, retail commerce kind of started off, but I can't keep track of all the little mom and pop shops which started accepting Bitcoins back in 2012. So um, the first real businesses that came online were exchanges and brokerages right in the middle, right? Because they came together because there were no exchange only. There wasn't a NASDAQ which only did matchmaking. So of course you got to do both. Um, Next thing that, that came along was mining, right? I mean, m big, like, institutional mining. And, of course, there were miners before institutions. I mean, there were, like, the, the, the uh, garage shops. But I think very recently we're seeing more and more large companies getting to mining, right? Um, next up, if you build your roads towards the next junction, oh, right, yay, two victory points for those of you keeping track. Five long, five contiguous roads, two victory points. All right. The, the, next, the next junction is, is the uh, insurance, custodial, and derivatives, right? Futures and derivatives, right? And I'll talk more about this uh, now uh, very shortly, but this is the, the, the next thing that's going to be developed this year, right? This year uh, at, at the earliest. But it really is required. Of course, there's a lot of activity going on ICOs, but we don't see a lot of institutionalization of ICO space. It's still just the Wild West. And we all know. It doesn't mean that these things aren't going on right, right now. It just means that it hasn't been institutionalized. It hasn't been um, um, you know, brought out into big boy space, right? big money space. It's, it's still a lot of uh, you know, uh, startups and your own things, which is valid, which is very valid. But uh, this is the institutional growth path. And in order for us to get maximal global cash, we need everybody on board, including all the institutions, because we're, we're all, corporations are a good thing. Oh, I, I kind of, I, that was so anticlimactic. Um, after we have custodial, 
then robbers go away. Because then once you have custodial and insurance, right, someone else taking care of the exchange's money, the exchange doesn't need to take hold money anymore, and therefore you don't have a problem of robbers in, in, in your exchange space anymore. And, and that's why custodial insurance is very, very important, okay? Um, after, after we clean up the exchanges, then you can start moving towards more of the exploratory parts of, oh, thank you very much, that's, I can see it much better now. Um, we can, the, the, the more uncharted, the new, the new country part of the, of the world, which is the capital markets and ICOs, right? And so that, that space is gonna be very interesting. I don't have too much to say on it, on, you know, because we're still working on the other parts, but I think this is the, the path and that's the goal because when we get to the point when ICOs and tokenization of everything becomes you know, um, institutionalized, right, and, and made safe for your average mom and pop Joe Smith, then that's when we can say, this is global cash, right? This, this system is now running the financial system of the world. This is, this is the FinTech 2.0. So now that I can show the map, let's give a little talk about what we're doing in this space, because I, I know there's a lot of hints and there's a lot of uh, articles which may or may not be uh, too accurate. So first off, I mean, we upgrade. And in, uh, on the upgradation, upgrading, well, you know, SBI is doing things in these spaces uh, under those companies. So SBI Virtual Currencies, which is an exchange that will, uh, or oh, brokerage, sorry, I made a mistake myself. Brokerage, which will be uh, um, opening up this year. SBI Match, which is a purely exchange, just basically matchmaking liquidity pool. And SBI Remit is a remittance company, which is, is tr trying to move their remittance models to s adopt some blockchain technology to do that in a cheaper way. Once we upgrade down there, we're gonna get uh, SBI Crypto. Uh, that's our mining arm, and we've started mining uh, earlier this year. And I'm proud to say that we're about 5% on a good day, 5 to 7% on a good day. Um, we're down there, by the way, it's, it's hard to see, but. Um, um, mining over there, so uh, so that that's that's very important because without mining, you don't actually have any control over you know the the transactions that you want to that you want to process as part of your exchanges or your remittance or your brokerage business. You're going to need to process your transactions. You can't always trust the general mining community to do it for you all the time. Um, so you should have, probably have some mining capability yourself. Next uh, next junction. SBI uh, Shoken, which is in Japanese, uh, which is the equity trading platform, online trading platform, which is the bread and butter of SBI Group. Uh, you know, we're planning on, um, we, we, we do some stuff which may involve securitization and token trading in the future. And of course, these big plays, which, um, which will, will remain, will, I'll, I'll leave as question marks, uh, will, will be upcoming, and, but, the focus very much so on custodial space. So, oh, finally, uh, Capital Markets, uh, SBI owns a large part of Morningstar, which is an equity rating company. So we plan on uh, starting gearing them towards rating ICOs um, to giving them uh, a ranking, kind of like, you know, the double A bonds, triple A bonds. We don't want any of those like, you know, fake double A mortgage backed securities that they had back in 2017. Yeah. but. Um, uh, we, we, we do think that there's a value in that because not everybody can read an ICE uh, white paper and then think, hmm, this is pretty good. I think I should put uh, $1,000 on it. So I, I think, you know, we're not going to be a say we're the authority, but we're going to give ratings. And I'm sure other companies will start doing the same and hopefully that will do its part in cleaning up the ICO industry a little bit and, and getting, keeping the wild, um, the wild players uh, out in fringes. Um, finally, then, I think the last thing, which is kind of like in the future when we start, you know, going out into the sea is IoT, right? So once we have tokenization of everything um, due to our new capital markets uh, uh, territory of ICOs, then we can start actually having machine drive cars, electrical meters, metering things and being paid in, in, a, in token. Um, and basically the whole machine economy is, is opened up. So, a little bold there. Okay. So, oh, that, it, for those keeping track, that was actually 10 points on the board. So it is an, um, so that, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We get the market, therefore we get an extra victory point. And, and therefore, we get uh, our 10 victory points. And that, that will 
I believe will, will bring us to, uh, to global cash adoption. So that kind of rounds up my presentation. Does anybody have any questions? I, do we have time for questions? No? Sorry. So find me afterwards. <laughs>